in the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it, I greet you all, the reviewers, in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. And uh, I begin this episode, which is entitled Scientific Notions in the Sunnah. And the Sunnah is the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is quoted to have said, أُوتِيتُ الْقُرْآنَ وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَ I was given the Qur'an and the like of it with it. So the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are actually a part of the divine revelation. It does not rank to the accuracy of the preservation of the Qur'an, letter to letter and word to word, yet it's part of the divine guidance that came down to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And for a Muslim, uh, we have to believe in both the Quran and the Sunnah, which are the basic foundations and the main sources of the last form of divine guidance to man from our Creator. The Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is mainly concerned with the religion, with its four basic foundations, faith, acts of worship, the moral code, and the code of transactions with others. Yet we find in the Sunnah many, many scientific notions that uh, can t testify to the might, knowledge, and will of the Creator, can testify to the correct prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and can be an address to the people of our time. Allah knows in his eternity that time will come when man will excel in the area of science and technology, and he will be in need for some scientific proofs for the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and for the divine nature of the glorious Qur'an. Because of this, Allah has infilled the Qur'an with uh, more than 1,000 cosmic verses and has given to Muhammad, peace be upon him, a large number of scientific facts that came in his speech, not as pieces of scientific information per se, but they come in the context of giving an example, of giving a, a paradigm, in giving a message, in giving a piece of wisdom. And uh, these can remain um, absolutely correct from the scientific point of view because they are a guidance from the Creator. Uh, all glory be to Him. I will not elaborate on the technicalities of dealing with the scientific notions in the Sunnah. Although I have written a book on uh, the scientific notions in the Sunnah, in both Arabic and English, and uh, part of that has been translated also in French. Yet I will give some examples about the scientific precision in many of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Although these scientific notions can come in the context of giving an example, of giving a piece of wisdom, in giving a parallel, in giving a paradigm, and because of the fact that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not talking out of his own knowledge, but he was revealing scientific uh, facts taught to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think these can be used today as a good uh, way of inviting others to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which is bitterly attacked by many uh, arrogant uh, scholars of the time, especially Orientalists, who do not know much about the Sunnah of the Prophet, yet we have to emphasize to every Muslim that the main sources of Islam are Quran and Sunnah. And the Sunnah or the tradition of the Prophet وسلم, elaborates many of the Quranic verses and explains many of the acts of worship and uh, outlines many of the pillars of faith in Islam. I have here a hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam quoted in Muslim, Imam Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, in that lengthy hadith is quoted to have said النجوم أمنة للسماء النجوم أمنة للسماء فإذا ذهبت النجوم أتى السماء ما توعد. The stars are 
points of preservation of the firmament. And we know that the stars are mainly in the first firmament. The other firmaments, other six firmaments, do not contain stars or planets. It has got a means of ornamentation other than stars and the planets. Uh, stemming from the Quran, Verily, we have uh, ornamented the first firmament by lamps, which are the stars. So the Prophet ﷺ says, النجوم أمانات للسماء Stars are the main points of security for the first firmament. فإذا ذهبت النجوم أتى السماء ما توعد If these stars would collapse, then everything will collapse. فإذا ذهبت النجوم أتى السماء ما توعد وأنا أمانات لأصحابي And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, and me is a, a means of security to my companions. فإذا ذهبت أتى أصحابي ما يعدون If I would pass away, many problems will arise for my companions. وأصحابي أمانات لأمتي And my companions are points of security for my umma, my nation, the Islamic nation. فإذا ذهب أصحابي أتى الأمة ما تعد If my companions would pass away, the Muslim umma would face many difficulties. And uh, the very first part of the hadith, this section of the hadith, النجوم أمانات للسماء is the most striking scientific fact in this hadith. Although it came in the context of giving an example, of giving a paradigm. النجوم أمانات للسماء فإذا ذهبت النجوم أتى السماء ما توعد. Stars are points of security for the first firmament. Nowadays, we know that stars are actually central points for governing the first firmament through gravity. And stars can have different densities. Uh, a star like our sun is a young star. It's very light, has got very low density. Yet, it has got the capacity to govern all the planets and other heavenly bodies in our solar system. By the gravity of the sun, all the planets and their uh, satellites are governed by the gravity of the sun. When we look to the galaxy, which is a big group of uh, clusters of the solar systems, we find what we call the uh, neutron stars. Neutron stars are excessively dense heavenly bodies. They have a density of about one billion tons to a cubic a uh, centimeter. So these uh, neutron stars are again centers of gravity that can control a galaxy containing billions of uh, solar systems. And we also have what we call the black holes. And the black hole has got a much higher density than a neutron star. The density of a black hole is estimated at the range of 250 billion tons for every cubic centimeters. So stars are actually centers of gravity. Each star with a specific gravity can control a group of the heavenly bodies. Our sun can control planets and satellites in our solar system. The neutron stars and the black holes can control galaxies as well as galactic concentrations. So uh, the science of astronomy came very lately to realize that actually the uh, gravitational pull of the different stars in our firmament are actually the points of security of this firmament. Who would have taught Muhammad this? Uh, may Allah's peace, blessing and mercy be with him. Who would have taught him this 14 centuries ago other than the creator himself? Who in his community would ask him about such a question unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that knowledge so that people of our time can read this uh, saying of his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and can see in it enough scientific notions that can testify to his prophethood sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is just one simple example for the scientific precision of Prophet Muhammad uh, may Allah's mercy 
and blessings be with him. I uh, quote another hadith um, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted to have said كانت الكعبة خشعة على الماء فدحيت منها الأرض The Kaaba was on a piece of elevated land uh, surrounded by water and then the whole land mass was expanded from it كانت الكعبة خشعة على الماء فدحيت منها الأرض Something very very strange for an unlettered prophet peace be upon him in an unlettered society to spell out such a scientific fact that uh, never came to the knowledge of man until the last few decades of the 20th century. The Kaaba was standing on a piece of volcanic island, an oceanic island surrounded by water. Recent scientific discoveries tell us that our Earth, in one of its earliest phases, was completely covered by water. There was no land mass. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his eternal will caused the central part, central axis of that ocean uh, to collapse in by a rift system. And this rift system um, has got a depth of between 65 kilometers and 150 kilometers. The thickness of the oceanic crust under seas and ocean is only five to eight kilometers. I will, inshallah, continue with explaining the scientific precedence in that hadith after a short break, and then I will come to you. So I will stop here, hoping to see you after a short break. Welcome back. Uh, after this short break, I have to continue with an authentic hadith quoted after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he is quoted to have said, كانت الكعبة خشعة على الماء فدحيت منها الأرض The Kaaba uh, was standing on an oceanic island surrounded by water and then the whole land mass was expanded from below the Kaaba. Uh, this uh, very authentic hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was found to be strange in its meaning by many scholars of the hadith was only uh, very recently proved to be a scientific reality. Nowadays, science tells us that uh, our planet in its early phases was covered, was completely covered by water. There was no land mass. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the axial part of that ocean to be rifted by deep rifts. These rifts range in length between um, 65 kilometers and 150 kilometers. And if we understand that the crust of the earth below oceans is very thin, it's only five to eight kilometers thick, and if you penetrate that crust with such deep folds, uh, these uh, rift systems can reach what we call the zone of weakness, in which we find rocks in a semi-molten stage, and then volcanicity would take place to build up what we call an oceanic ridge. And actually, all the oceans of our time constitute or have as their axial parts oceanic ridges. The very first peak of that oceanic ridge that was riven above the water level constituted an oceanic island. Then Allah sent his angels to build the Kaaba on the very first part of land mass that he created. And that's why Allah has blessed the site of the Kaaba, the Haram of the Kaaba, on the very first moment of the creation of the universe, as stated in the Quran and in the Sunnah. So from that uh, volcanic vent, uh, from this volcanic island, similar to the Hawaiian Islands, the uh, Philippine Islands, the Japanese Islands, the uh, Indonesian Islands, all these are volcanic islands emanating from the bottoms of the oceans. So the Kaaba was built by the angels on the very first piece of land mass that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and Allah has blessed that area, the area of the Kaaba, the Haram of Mecca al mukarrama Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was quoted to have said uh, that or after he was asked what was the first mosque in which Allah was worshipped on the first of that planet. He said al Kaaba, the Kaaba. And then he was asked what after that? He answered al Masjid al-Aqsa, the farthest mosque. What was the span of time between building the Kaaba and the Masjid al-Aqsa? He said 40 years. And 40 years um, in the span of the history of the earth, which is uh, calculated to about 5,000 million years, the oldest rocks on earth, 5,000 million years, in a universe uh, estimated to be around 14 billion years. So this is nothing. And that's why we know that both the Kaaba and the farthest mosque and Masjid al-Aqsa were built on a blessed land built by the angels in preparation for the coming of Adam and Eve. May Allah be pleased with them both. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized this fact, this scientific fact that only came to human knowledge in the last few decades of the 20th century. كانت الكعبة خشعة على الماء فدحيت منها الأرض. The Kaaba was a prominence on the surface of water. Then the whole land mass was expanded from it. Science tells us today that the whole land mass grew from a single volcanic vent or a series of volcanic vents in uh, one oceanic island. And through the volcanic activity of this volcanic island, the whole land mass was built in the form of a single continent, which scientists call it the mother continent or the mother of all continents, or Pangaea. And this continent was split by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into the seven main continents of our time. And these continents started to drift away from each other until they reached their present site. Because of this, Mecca has always been and will always be at the center of the land mass. If we draw a circle having Mecca at its apex, at its center, this circle can in encompass all the land masses of our globe. And this is again a physical sign for the nobility, for the honor, for the blessed nature of Al Haram Al Makki. And because of this, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spelled out, has explained this fact that came to human knowledge only a few decades ago. And for an unlettered Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an unlettered society to speak about this scientific fact which only came to human notice in the, during the late 60s, early 70s of the 20th century. And I dare say that many scientists of our time do not know anything about it. Who would have told Muhammad, peace be upon him, about this scientific fact other than the Creator himself? And who in his community would have forced him to spell that out? Why Allah taught him the, this knowledge? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all glory be to him, knows in his eternal knowledge that time will come when man will discover this fact that all the land mass of our time was created from a single volcanic vent uh, on a mid-oceanic ridge within the uh, primordial ocean that covered our globe. And uh, because of this, Allah has made the uh, Kaaba or Mecca al mukarrama or Al-Haram al makki has made that to be always at the focal point, at the central point of uh, the continental masses. And that's why I dare say that this simple hadith can remain as a living testimony to the correct prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and to the fact that he, may Allah's peace and the blessings be with him uh, all the time, he was always connected with the divine guidance. He was not speaking out of his own memory. He was speaking about what he was taught by Archangel Jibreel alayhi salam. So this hadith again can remain as a living testimony to the correct prophethood of Muhammad peace be upon him 
and a living testimony that he was always connected with the divine guidance. And that's why the Quran describes him by the Quranic verses. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not pronouncing his own ideas or his own desires or his own aspirations or his own wishes. Verily, it's only a divine guidance revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Archangel Jibreel. He was taught that by a mighty angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, um, until the other verses in Surah An-Najm. So I uh, here emphasize the fact that uh, every scientific notion in the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, can be used as a living testimony to uh, testify to his correct prophethood and to testify to the fact that these words uttered by him did not come out of his own thinking, not come out of his own memory, did not come out of his own mind, but was revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this can testify to his correct prophethood. This hadith, كَانَتِ الْكَعْبَةُ غُشْعَةً عَلَى الْمَاءِ فَدُحِيَتْ مِنْهَا الْأَرْضِ The Kaaba was a prominence on the surface of water, and all the land mass was actually expanded from it, is a scientific miracle by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Quran says, إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببكة مباركا وهدى للعالمين Verily, the very first house that was established as a house of worship for humanity at large uh, is the one in Bakka or Mecca. Uh, so the Kaaba was not built by man. It was built by the angels. And the farthest mosque was built 40 years later by the angels. And Allah has blessed has blessed these two places and made them holy places, the Kaaba and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, so that people may not forget about the Islamic obligation to liberate the Aqsa from the hands of the occupiers of our time. So really this hadith uh, contains a large quantity of scientific knowledge that was not known at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and there were, was no way for anybody to know anything about it. And inshallah, I will continue with other examples from the scientific notions in the Sunnah. And until uh, the coming episode, I leave you with the blessings and mercy of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Filtration.